Hey everyone, welcome to the second episode of the Noted Code Along. Uh, this one's just going to be talking about what we need to get started. So last episode we talked about sort of uh, what we're going to be building and in this episode we're going to get started uh, and just kind of get ourselves set up. So um, what I've gone ahead and done since uh, the last video is I deleted my kind of finished files. So now I just have an empty app.js file. Um, and what we're going to do is let's talk about the gulp file before we get writing any uh, simple JS code. So in the gulp file, it's pretty straightforward. We have, uh, we're using Browserify, we're using uh, Babelify, so we're using uh, Babel, Babel, whatever. Uh, we are using Browser Sync as well. If you've never used Browser Sync, what Browser Sync is, is it allows us to, uh, when we uh, finish a task, it allows us to refresh the browser right away without us having to do it. Uh, saves us a whole command R or control R. Whew. Uh, anyways, um, and then some other kind of just utilities here. So source, buffer, uh, notify, and plumber. Um, if you haven't seen my video on getting started with uh, Gulp and uh, Babel or Gulp and Babelify, uh, check them out. I'll link them uh, down in the, the uh, description below. Um, but if you are kind of uh, confused or maybe unsure as to how this file maybe works, uh, check out those two videos and hopefully that'll clear some things up for you. Okay, so uh, there's three tasks, uh, two really main tasks here. Uh, there's a JS task. So the JS task is used to compile our JavaScript. So the way that we're working here is we have a public folder, which is where all of our compiled assets live, uh, or in this case, also our, our CSS. We're not using any SAS or anything like that. So this is pre-provided CSS for you. And then we also have uh, our app, the, the thing that's going to get compiled. Now, this is compiled from my previous app. So uh, this is just... Uh, garbage at this point. But what's going to happen is uh, when this task runs, Browserify uh, is going to go look at this app file, find anything that has been imported, uh, any modules that have been imported, uh, transform any of the ES6 code into uh, browser readable code for now, uh, and then take any of the React, so the JSX that we're using, and convert it into um, browser readable code. Um, because JSX cannot be read by the browser, it has to be transpiled. It's going to bundle it up. If there are any errors there, it's going to shoot us an error, a little growl message uh, over here. Uh, make it an app.js file and just put it into the public. And then this line down here, the uh, reload stream true, uh, stream true uh, this is used for Browserify, uh, or sorry, uh, Browser Sync, so many browser or something. Browser Sync, uh, when this is all done, we say, hey, reload that page. Uh, you can see it right here. Uh, and what that will do is that will actually pop, uh, if we take a look, uh, do, 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 uh, it'll actually reload this page here. So just trying to get my sublime back here. Um, yeah, the other task, a uh, really small one, just a browser sync task, basically just initializes browser sync. Uh, browser sync, what it'll do is it'll open a little local server. Um, uh, I'm assuming it's a node server uh, and typically open it up on like port 3000. Uh, and what this allows us to do is to serve our assets from there. So we're just telling it initialize the server uh, in the base directory will be the root. So uh, relative to the gulp.js file. Uh, and then this middleware here, this actually just left in here if you wanted to at some point maybe add React Router. Um, but we are not doing a React Router in this video series, uh, maybe a later one. But this allows us to actually keep uh, our single page application uh, always loading that index.html file even when we actually change our, our path, our history. So we need to use the history API uh, from the browser to make sure that happens. Otherwise, it's going to look for like mysite.com slash if I go about, it'll try to load an about.html instead of the React Router route. Maybe that doesn't make sense to you right now, but uh, I'm sure in a later video, we'll clear that up. And then basically down here, we have our gulp task. So this is the default task. This is what happens uh, when we type in gulp, it'll allow us to uh, run these things. So what happens is the JS task runs, the BS task, <laughs> the uh, browser sync task uh, will run. And then it'll set up two watches for us. It'll wait and watch for any JS file in any folder uh, inside of the source. Uh, and then it'll run and compile our assets. And it'll look for any style.css files. Uh, and anything that changes there, it'll reload the page. And that's it. Uh, so if we uh, go and say gulp here, uh, it'll go, it'll run, and it'll load the page. Now, because we have no... Um, 
no, f uh, what's the word I'm looking for? No code in our app.js file here. Uh, we see nothing. So before we get into talking about the base structure, let's get ourselves started. Let's put a first component onto the page. Uh, and then in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to dive deeper into sort of the, the structure of the application. So uh, what we're going to be using is we're going to be using ES6 uh, modules, uh, and this is what Browserify is going to take and uh, compile for us. So we're going to import React from React. We're going to import something called React DOM from oops, React DOM. So uh, before uh, earlier React, so I think React maybe like 12 or 13 um, or 0, 12, 0, 13. Um, the way that you rendered onto the page was all inside of the one React mo module. But now, um, because React is sort of a server side and browser side, client side uh, rendering, uh, that rendering, that the, the ability to actually put onto the page has been broken up into two to separate packages. So React is the core thing that has all of the component stuff. And then React DOM, or I think it's called React Server, uh, is used to actually put that on uh, to the page or render it on the server for you. So. Uh, we are also going to be using the class syntax here. So if you type uh, class app extends, oops, extends, extends react.component, um, this is how we are going to build our components. If you've done any React in the past, uh, especially like React, I don't know, um, last year pretty much, uh, react.create class might have been what you've seen uh, to create these. Um, but uh, the React folks have kind of gone uh, full into the uh, class syntax for um, how they want you to create the components. And that actually brings up some really interesting situations that we'll be dealing with shortly, um, but it's just sort of like what they're kind of doing. Uh, it seems like that's what's going to be idiomatic React kind of going forward. So that's what we're going to be doing. That's how we'll learn it. Uh, and we'll talk about the nuances of create class and component as we get to them. Uh, so. Let's make it really quick and uh, easy here. Let's just get a render uh, method here that returns just some really simple uh, JSX. So we're going to return uh, our H1 here. And we're just going to say, hello world. So hopefully that works for us. Uh, again, if you haven't worked with React before, you can see that we're doing some HTML inside of here. Uh, this is actually called JSX. And what it is really is when this gets transpiled down, the H1 is really just a function. And I'll be able to show you that uh, in a second, um, but it's really kind of interesting. Uh, I think a lot of people get hung up on this idea that the JSX is this, uh, this like we're back into HTML into our, our JavaScript. But in reality, we're, we're just using functions. These are just like, uh, I almost like syntactic sugar on top of the function. So it's like nicer and easier to write. Um, yeah, let's get this on the page and let's move on. So uh, the last thing we need to do is we need to call react dom dot render. Uh, so we need to tell it what component we would like to render. So in our case, we say app. Um, this little slash here, very important. Uh, otherwise, it'll throw an error. And we also need to say document dot get element by ID. So we need to tell it where we want to render our application. In that case, we want to render it inside of this app uh, element here. So the main, um, main HTML element that has the ID of app on it. So this is where our application will live. So uh, just in quotes over here, uh, we'll just say app right there like that, semicolon. And that's it. That's our sort of hello world. Let's get it onto the page. So if you haven't run Gulp yet, make sure you run Gulp. Uh, and uh, further to that, if you have an NPM installed yet, you're going to want to make sure you do that. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned it in the last video, um, but because we're using Gulp, we need to do NPM install to install all those modules that appear in the package.json file. Um, but I've already done that, so I type Gulp, it goes out, it runs the code, and ta-da, we have the hello world, uh, and we are ready to get going. Uh, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the basic structure. Uh, we're going to have to put a whole bunch of HTML in here, uh, a header, a nav, and a side, stuff like that, so that we can get going uh, and actually start uh, interacting with our application a bit more. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next video.